Okay, so I wanted to just give you a quick uh, breakdown of some stuff we were working on earlier today. Um, this is a uh, skeleton model. Uh, it's basically just a part, uh, but it has uh, some different um, elements in here that we're going to be using as kind of a measuring stick for where things are. So you can see that this shaft that's in the middle here um, is actually kind of positioned around these kind of visual references, and then the width of the machine is here in the middle. Uh, and the goal here is to just kind of calculate with a uh, roller configuration for this would be based on some different parts. Uh, so if we take a look at the design as it is right now, um, you'll see this here. So if we change this to like a, a 725.45 as our machine inside width, this could also be done from the outside if you wanted to. You'll notice that it's actually computing uh, the proper placement and positioning of things based on the, uh, um, the design of the uh, machine that's here. Um, the, way, uh, the way that it's doing this is actually, um, uh, it's doing a couple of cool things. The first thing it's doing is open up the, uh, the master assembly, which is this, and then it is uh, setting the width to a specific part within memory, um, which is the skeleton part. And then it's regenerating the skeleton part. That, that basically uh, forces it to recompute all the proper lengths and reference dimensions that are in there. Um, if we take a look at that particular part, just the machine part itself, or the skeleton. I'm going to use uh, Nitro program to take a peek at this. Uh, so these are the basic relations that are there. Um, so you can just see it's just very, very, very simple stuff. And uh, some of these dimensions are actually the reference dimensions. So if we were to click on this uh, and or this, you can see that um, these are the dimensions that we're kind of mapping into uh, what the computed result is. Um, so those values are actually being stored as parameters and then they're being copied to the target models where they're needed. So when we go down to the, uh, let's click this window, nope of the uh, roller assembly here. Let's take a look at this. Um, this actually has a little bit more meat and potatoes in it uh, as to what's happening. Uh, but the, um, uh, the whole point is to kind of look at the uh, uh, parameter data that are being passed to it. Uh, from NitroCell and then derive, you know, what should the pattern be and the spacing between things to put it uh, in between uh, the clearances of those plates where it's supposed to go. Um, to do that, we're actually using a, a variable called uh, roller dot, or roller part. Uh, that's a parameter that is controls the name of the part that's there. So if you change this to like a part two and swap it, it'll actually swap that out in the pattern. Um, or let's put it back to part one for a second. Now it's uh it's not computing everything because um, the 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 data that needs to compute the pattern is actually within those parts. So each of these parts has a width, and that width is actually being passed uh, from the sub level down here back up to the roller assembly uh, in NitroCell, and then used to then compute what the proper pattern uh, placement, the count, and the spacing should be. So uh, when we run this. Um, as you can see here, it's uh, it's made this change. If we kick this out to like a 12, 4, 5, 0.67, and maybe change the part to something else, like part two, let's say run, then you'll notice that it actually is computing things correctly. If we change the part out to part three, and of course this would be governed on your design standards and your rules as to which parts you used. And, uh, but the nice thing is, is that the the uh, placement of it will be uh, perfectly done every time uh, because, as we see here, uh, it's using that skeleton as a reference for what the uh, target dimensions and locations should be.